The Russo brothers just explained one of the biggest potential plot holes from Avengers Endgame. You're gonna love this one, especially if you're a Thanos fan. It's like the news, but for nerds. Subscribe so you never miss an episode. Today's shout out goes to Maroni Ugeli. Indeed, Stormbreaker was in the bag that Thor takes onto the Milano. We'll do another nerd card question at the end of this video. What is up everybody? Happy Thursday to you. I'm of course Josh. This is the Den of Nerds. I need to issue a spoiler warning here. Unfortunately, there's some crazy news out there again about something that happens in Endgame and I want to talk about it with you guys right now. Also, for the records, the Russo brothers have let everyone know on social media that the spoiler ban lifts on Monday. So on Monday, we're going to start putting spoilers in the thumbnails, spoilers in the titles. So if you haven't seen Endgame, definitely go see it this weekend because all spoiler hell is about to break loose. All right, now let's get into this news. Now, the Russo brothers have been doing a lot of press post-launch of Avengers Endgame, and they've been answering some really interesting questions, including spoilery ones. And just yesterday, they were asked about one of the biggest potential plot holes in the film. This would be around the Pym particles that Thanos gets from the nebula from the future. You remember, there were two nebulas at one time in the past when they go back and create that alternate reality reality to get both the soul stone and the power stone there were two nebulas there and their wiring and whatever got crossed over thanos figures out the plan of the avengers realizes what happens to himself in the future and then finds the pym particles and realizes he can go through time now the plot hole or the seeming plot hole was how could thanos with a single vial of pym particles be able to bring not only himself and his ship but his entire armada all of his army comes through time to the present how would that be possible with a single vial of pym particles so, in response to the question of how Thanos brought his entire army, they said this. There's a guy called Maw in his army. He was a great wizard. Thanos himself was a brilliant genius as well. Those two easily reverse engineered and mass produced Pym particles. That is a pretty crazy answer and it's so comic booky that I love it. But let's let's break down what exactly this means. So Ebony Ma, who we do see a lot of in Infinity War, is not only a wizard, but is a brilliant scientist in the comic books. This guy's very, very smart. As he says in the movie to Doctor Strange, in all the years I've served Thanos, I've never failed him. So he's cream of the crop, top lieutenant of Thanos. And I love how the Russos explain that Thanos himself is a brilliant genius. This is one of the things that's not really fully explained in the movie version of Thanos, but Thanos is a brilliant scientist. He is so stinking smart and knows a lot about the universe, especially after he has all of the stones. And so I absolutely love the idea that the explanation for how they all got through was that Thanos and Ebony Maw took the Pym particles and reverse engineered them and then mass produced them. I mean, Pym particles are one of the most advanced and just unique pieces of tech in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. They're very important if they were to fall into the wrong hand it would be tragic. That's what's happening in all of the Ant-Man movies. And now, because of Endgame, we realize that the potential for them to help through time travel via the quantum realm is even crazier than all of the other crazy stuff they could do. It is frankly so cool that that is the explanation and that they were able to do this and that's how all of the armies came through. Pretty crazy stuff and also super bold move by Thanos. I mean, I, I can see like where the strategy was there, but he just like basically said, well, I want to get to the reality where I I won, and even though I'm dead in that reality, I'm just gonna defeat all of the Avengers, get the stones, and fix, which was the first time around, a failure, because even by leaving half, I made a mistake. They rebelled, rose up, and threatened the balance that I know this universe deserves. And so, you know, the second go around, Thanos is there to kill everybody. But it's still crazy that this all sort of propels him. He takes the pin particles, does that, and comes to the present. It's also just simply amazing that the Russo brothers are coming out and explaining this kind of stuff. It makes me think of a couple different things. I mean, number one, they just know how much fans care about this kind of stuff, and they want to be open about it, and they want to talk to people about it. That's why I think they're lifting the spoiler ban on Monday because there's so much to get into about this film and about the future of the MCU. And number two, I think it proves that like any self-respecting comic book nerd, these guys have all of the answers. They have it all figured out and stuff that maybe they didn't explicitly spell out in the film, I am damn sure they have an explanation for it as the writers, you know, the, the sort of directors and just storytellers of this whole thing. And I'm sure there's people at Marvel that have that information as well. In fact, they recently said some really cool stuff about Peter Parker and the future there. That I'm gonna save that for a separate video, but just suffice it to say, Spider-Man Far From Home, 
dope movie, very important for Marvel fans. It's time to start getting hyped for that film. Now let's check the nerd card before we get out of here. I wanna know what year is it in the current MCU timeline at the end of Endgame? What is the year that it's all going down in? Answer that question in the comment section below. As I always say, I hope you're having an awesome and a nerdy day and I'll see you in the next video.